We have three pound, we have 12 pound, we have 30 pound destruction coming your way. It has been an absolutely absurd day here. There is no other way to describe it. Let's check out a few of those highlights right now. All right, we've had some amazing hits, some really cool, unique robots that we're seeing for the first time. It's been an incredible day so far. Every weight class has had some heavy hitters just throwing down, damaging each other, damaging the floors. It's been amazing. We've seen some of our favorite robots just getting upset. We've seen newbies just really tearing up the old heads. <laughs> we've seen folks from all over the world. And we've got a lot more coming up. All right, so let's get into some Havoc 101. We have three weight classes, three, 12, and 30 pounds. This is a single elimination tournament. Your objective, knock out your opponent within three minutes. If you don't knock them out or tap them out, the judges will decide the winner. We have house spots that will give you one unstick per match. And by the way, anyone can participate. Anyone? Anyone. If you can drive a bot, you can come here and play. It doesn't matter if you're three years old or 103 years old. It's all good. Come on by. 30 pound weight class, quarterfinals. And that is and exactly go. Wow. Wow. Flying up into the wall, upside down already. That takes some serious guts to go weapon to weapon with something as big and dangerous as Mirage. Aries having a little bit of drive oh, wow. issue here. Looks like their left side is down after that initial hit. Is this going to be enough? We've seen Mirage get stuck on its head earlier today. They kind of did the thing, as we say. Weapon to weapon here. Not oh, what Ares wanted. That is a bad spot for Ares to come out of it. We're not seeing anything from its mini bot. Ares, both half of Ares are having drive issues. And, you know, I, I would, am very surprised here. I thought Ares was going to come on and, and put on a show, but... You, you'll notice, though, Adam, the weapon is currently down on Mirage. Oh, not anymore. Oh, no, not anymore. <laughs> I they, spoke too soon. They heard you, and they turned it back on. Ares stuck on its head, calling for an unstick as Mirage goes after the flame bot and dismantles it. Mirage is an absolute force today. They are so unshakable in their performance. Such a stable robot, such a heavy hitter. Ares just propped up against the wall. You can hear the crowd counting them out. That's it. Very impressive performance. Away we go. That is great mobility from Phenomenon. Oh! Putting B-Force in a bad place immediately. Going after the Whoa! The wedges on the front of that half of B-Force really overpowering Phenomenon. Oh, nice little trick there by the upside down half of B-Force to get itself out of the thing. However, unfortunately, it's now gotten itself back into the thing. Now, Phenomenon's fork is stuck Whoa. in the air. That could be a big issue here as they flip the other yellow half of B-Force back. Yeah, that is a game changer if B-Force can take advantage of it. The weapon on the yellow half of B-Force has been down for some yes. time. Unable to take advantage of the fork issues that Phenomenon's having, keeping Phenomenon away from getting these hits. The black half flipped back over. Now the black half is uh, driving a little slower. B4 is having a bunch of issues here, taking these hits from the larger. Oh, this is great phenomenon. control. Look at this pin from B4 on wow. Phenomenon. When you can do that and show off that, hey, I'm still a lethal force, and even without a weapon. And able to release the pin. The black one's weapon not really spinning as fast as we're used to. Phenomenon getting another hit there. Oh! Yeah, the black half is definitely struggling. Phenomenon's showing off at the end of the fight here. I think Phenomenon had a good beginning. Oh, oh what a place to get stuck. And they might get the KO with 20 seconds left, and both halves of B4 stuck upside down. What a show of driving prowess from Brandon Bennett Young in Phenomenon today. Uh, a stupendous place to leave your opponent if you want to make an impression in the judges, but it doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a KO. Your winner in this fight, who will be going on to fight Anxiety, 
is phenomenon. 30 pound weight class, semifinals. Robots As fight. with so many robots, the key for Kazan Life here is to get around to the sides <laughs> or the back of its opponent. The sound of Mirage is yeah, incredible. Yeah, there's that fire. And that was a good torching. I mean, yeah. the spinning blade, it looks like, is almost able to put out the fire on the front of Kazala. Now, Mirage has been dominant in drive today, but their weapon consistently goes down. As we see, again, it seems to have gone down. Now, Kazala Light is interesting because it has an ability to turn that fire up and down, but even at a low level of blast, like we're seeing here, that will still damage an opponent if it can direct it to the yeah. right spot. I am seeing a lot of flame inside of Kazad Light, not quite where you want it to be. True, but that is uh, unfortunately the reality of many flame-based <laughs> robots. Uh, if you can have a flame move forward, it means you need air to move forward, which means you need a pathway where conceivably that flame could also move backward <laughs> and come back and visit you. Now, Mirage, uh, very dominant, as we said, in drive today, uh, just using its weight and these cleated uh, shuffler feet to really grab into the ground and bully its opponents around. Mirage still going strong, so I think if this does make You're it to the judges, it's going to go to Mirage, in my opinion, as they dominate I think uh, you're right. this fight. We do now have an official judge's decision, so let's see it right now. That's right. By a very large margin, Mirage beating Gazalites. That means Matthew Marini and Mirage moving on into the next round. That means that Matthew Marini moving on into the finals in the 30-pound bracket. <laughs> By judge's decision, welcome to NHRL, Matthew. You're in the finals. What? <laughs> that's absolutely crazy. He was right there, so we just had to yell at him because that's completely insane. Um, congratulations to him. Wow. I am blown away, but right now let's meet their next competitors. This is who he's going to be facing off in, against in the finals. Phenomenon has a large oh. anti-horizontal wedge at it right now. Phenomenon spun up the wrong way out of the gates. Interesting. And uh, that delayed them a bit, but able to spin correctly eventually. Look at that. That is a... Uh... Oh, and then it's smoking oh! it on fire! Oh! Wow! It is time mm -hmm. for a final. Yes. Let's go ahead and check out the 30-pound bracket, see what got us to where we are today. That's right, Mirage, the rookie, the brand new bot made its way through Mirage and Kazaa Light. And they're going up against Phenomenon, Brandon Bennett Young. They went through B-Force, they went through Anxiety, and now they have met in the finals of the 30 pound bracket. Who is going home with the golden dumpster? Let's find out today. Here's the tale of the tape. From the Mirage team, we've got Matthew Marini from Palm City, Florida. He's a vertical spinner going four and one at his one NHRL event. Brandon Bennett Young brings Phenomenon all the way from Bowie, Maryland. It's a vertical spinner with a 19 and 15 record. This is his ninth NHRL. Mirage's drive has been dialed in all day, very controlled, very durable, but the weapon has not been there. Do you think the weapon's going to be able to hold up here in the finals and pull out the victory? I think the weapon is going to hold up. It really only needs to deliver two five, good hits, five, I'd say. I just don't five, know if it's going to be able to get uh, five, the delivery five, that it needs. Five. Here we go, out of the box. Both taking it slow, spinning up. Oh, the weapon is down not spinning up. on Mirage. Phenomenon Ph spinning up. Yeah, that... That said, despite Phenomenon's big hit to the front of Mirage, Mirage is showing no signs of stopping. Mirage is so heavy, so big. Phenomenon needs to build up the speed on these hits to be able to deliver any sort of inertia and get that tip it's after. Otherwise, it's just going to be shooting sparks off the front. Really incredible how well Mirage is able to face its opponent despite its, its size and its drive style. Decent hit there, but still unable to get Mirage flipped over. Now, you see on the front of Mirage, there is a... Uh, oh, oh, and there it is. That is the moment Phenomenon was looking for. Now Mirage... Mirage. Whoa. Oh. Mirage can run upside down like this, but if it gets tipped just a little more onto the front, it will be stuck. 
That's what Brandon's gonna be looking to do, and there it is. Big pieces missing, but it doesn't really matter. The fact that it's stuck right now, we're gonna have an unstick attempt, uh, and it's gonna be successful, but that only needs to happen one more time for this match to just be done. <laughs> Ironically, uh, Flo has tipped him in a worse position. Uh, yeah, this is, I don't think this is what Mirage wanted. <laughs> but there you go, a little help from uh, Phenomenon gets them back on their wheels. That's gonna count um, as a successful unstick. Hey, and it's a hey, full hey, self the way back. But look at this. The Whoa. UHMW on the back of Mirage is so distorted that it's making it hard for those legs to yeah. grip the ground. They're still touching a little bit, but much less than they usually do, and that's significantly impacting the their mobility. The package now wow. gone on the front is left. Is that a lipo bag? It is. That is a strategy people take. They What better place to store your lipos than inside of a lipo bag? inside your armored I robot. I guess it can keep your robot from getting too smelly. Uh, let's see if it can protect it's against the weapon of Phenomenon. It's a strategy, Adam. Let's oh. see if it pays off for him. But I'm going to come in and tickle in that bag a little bit yeah, with the weapon. A little uh, easy oh. follow going on there. In a way, Brandon's being nice here, not going directly for the gaping hole of the bag of batteries. Instead, going around the side. It is peeling apart Mirage like it's a tin can from the 1920s. Mirage's armor has been holding up all day, but for not the power of Phenomenon too much. Wow! Oh, right. Look at that hit! hit. And that there go the batteries. What a hit! Completely. Look at the calm, cool collected face of Brandon Bennett Young. Brandon Bennett Young, phenomenon, going to the world championships. I'm starting to see a pattern developing here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, phenomenon was a big test today. Uh, a lot of the ideas from Vorion carried over for it, but I wanted to try out a new hub motor idea. It uh, makes the robot a lot more compact, cleaner, more efficient, and I think it kind of worked. Now, you were showing me just earlier, Phenomenon was in, like, all, both of your Phenomenons were in impeccable uh, condition. How did they get this far in the tournament tonight in such great shape? I mean, it was scratched. Like, there's paint probably on it somewhere, but... <laughs> no, but really, it was just very tactical driving. I think a lot of my competitors just trying to get some new stuff working out for them, so they were trying to get it going. Uh, but Phenomenon sort of had the base from Vorion, so as I developed it further, it was just sort of getting the last sort of 5 to 10% out of it, and I think that's the real difference in all its fights. Are you going to be bringing Phenomenon back at any point prior to the World Championships? Uh, in theory, I might come around like October, but we'll see. Uh, there's other robots I still want to try out. Um, it kind of depends on how much money I have left. It's a lot of expensive to do all this kind of stuff, but Man, is it cool. <laughs> what is this? I mean, that looks like a giant robot. Oh, this is dodgeballs. And what's it saying? Oh, is this Circuits O'Houlihan? <laughs> Circuits O'Houlihan? And that seems heavy, heavier than, than 30 pounds. I wonder yeah, who it's that, fighting. That is insane. Yeah, so there we go. They got, all right, it's switched on. All right, so who's Circuits O'Houlihan going to be facing off with in this challenge? It looks like they're closing up the door. What? Why are they closing up the door? Who are they going to fight? Uh, I don't know. This is very confusing. Oh, oh my God. Was that? I think it's, I think it's fighting us, Kyle. Okay. We should fight it. You want to go fight a Let's robot? Let's fight it. Let's fight it. Let's go fight a robot. Has this ever happened before? Right. Every day. This is every day of my life. It's never been Lock like before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a big hit on Sam, taking it 
right to the lower extremities. No. Balls are flying in the arena. It's like reverse hungry, hungry hippos. The pink Dodgers going up against the blue Dodgers. It's hard to figure out what's happening here. How is this being scored? There's no rhyme or reason. There is madness and machine. I think uh, I think Circuit of Hulahan is winning this one. Yo! Ricky, uh, uh, what, uh, what is the strategy in a fight like this? The strategy is don't get hit. Don't get hit. That I've is, seen a lot of people oh, go, oh, is that a catch? That is a catch. A catch. That is a <laughs> back. That is an, uh, an oh. assertion of dominance. He caught that one with his face. There's only one fate for a robot gone mad. <laughs> oh, from the ropes. They're just reloading the robot with ammo. Yo. Oh, 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 no. no. That ball is getting chewed Ready? up by the friction device in the front of that robot, or it's just really angry. <laughs> really angry. 15 we seconds to go on the clock. Who's gonna take it home? It is anyone's game. We are at eight, <laughs> seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who your winner is. I don't know who lost but I think we can all go home a little happier today. We're all having the winners seen here. whatever the hell that was. A hula hand with a little victory dance at the end. If you really want these pink uh, dodgeball professionals <laughs> to bring it home, cheer for it now. Let's hear it. Oh, that's real strong. Oh. And robot builders, robot uh, spectators, if you think the blue dodge Brought it home. Cheer it for Blue. Oh, Adam, I gotta say, from where I'm sitting, that was a pink victory. I think I concur. All right, officially, your victors are the Pink Dodgers. I think Blue is upset. Blue is upset. I can tell from here, Blue is plotting their revenge. This is not the last time no. we will see the Blue Dodgers. We're gonna see them again. They're gonna slink back to their caves. They're gonna plot for months on end, and we're gonna have balls flying around the arena like we've never seen before. No. Three pound weight class, quarterfinals. Interesting matchup right. here. You don't see Jelly Baby running any sort of wedge, just going straight in with forks against a horizontal spinner. And winning the first engagement here as Radix, uh, nothing doing against the front setup. No, this is a very uh, effective wedge situation, and Radix is a robot that gets very destabilized very oh, fast. Big hit to the top of Jelly Baby there, but it doesn't seem to have done anything. No, I, remember, that Jelly Baby name is not just for fun. It is a squishy robot in a lot of places. Yeah. And that padding takes a lot of punishment. A nice little self right there. It was fun when the robot can flip itself back over. Jelly Baby's robot uh, flipper, uh, deceptively fast, a uh, little pop it can give people. Just toss them up a little bit. It doesn't seem to even need it here as it's just able to send Radix flying using Radix's own uh, kinetic energy. Yeah, it is both fast and powerful and unnecessary at the moment, yeah. although I believe we'll see it here in just yeah. a second. It, if, uh... Radix really no answer yes. for the shape on Jelly Baby. You see a little flip there, just waiting the waiting out the pin counter. And that is Scoring the smart points. move here is you take that pin almost all the way up to the pin count exactly. limit, and then you pop your your weapon, your lifter, whatever it may be. Some people would say, like, why? Why wait? But uh, as a control bot, you want to show control and you, you want to run down the clock. Every second you're driving around is a second you could get smacked with that spinner in the wrong spot. So if you can hold that pin, you want to hold it and run down that clock while you're scoring points. Tremendous design here on Jelly Babel. He's able to drive Radix around the arena, almost teasing them. The weapon gets so close to the wheels here. Yeah, oh, that's the hit Radix wants on the back of Jelly Baby. 
and Jelly, Jelly Baby stuck under the wall, maybe. Yeah, it appears so. That is a bad place to be, oh. but they aren't there long. Radix a little impatient, doesn't hit the juicy bits. However, oh. left-hand side drive on Jelly Baby, now out of commission, at least almost entirely. Yeah, I wonder if that was actually a result of that hit. Were they able to get the wheel there? It could be. It could be also something that broke while it was stuck trying yeah. to free itself. Well, uh, that's a big change in this fight with 40 seconds to go. I think this will end up getting to the judges. That's a massive swing in the damage score. As a control bot, you cannot give up damage, and that is going to hurt. They're yeah. also losing control points now, unable to keep going with their streak. They are certainly failing to gain them at the very least. The points that they gained early in the match will carry them oh. some way. And now, oh, okay, they come was... back to life a little bit. But with eight seconds left in the fight. Oh, big hit! Jelly Baby taking some big hits. That was Jelly Baby's fight, but my goodness, those last 30 seconds with an emphasis yep. on the last 10, everything turned around. Judge's decision. The winner is Jelly Baby. A lot That's of wear and tear on both of these robots so far. <laughs> Warheart, of course, has their second wedge bot, which is going to wow. come out. What a hit from Comet. Launching Warheart into the air. But Warheart's second robot throwing Comet off a little bit there. Warheart's multibot hung up on the wall for a moment and then coming back Warheart for some having revenge. Drive issues. It looks like their right side is sticking. Oh. Their, their wedge is doing so well to control this fight, and they're wow. unable to take advantage, but do line the weapon up for a hit there. Comet is so oh. quick when it wants to be. It can launch into a just stunning attack. Painful for Warhard to be stuck here up against the ropes as the, the wedge half is doing so well to control Comet. Almost just driving them directly into the weapon on Warhard, using Warhard like a, a sort of mobile arena hazard. And remember, too, that uh, smaller segment of Warhard piloted oh, by oh, sparks Ooh. flying everywhere after that giant hit. Warhard setting itself flying. <laughs> wow, that is an incredible hit launching Common across the arena. Warhard has enough maneuverability to sometimes line up massive hits on Comet. It is much easier to be defensive and keep your weapon to the opponent than it is to attack. And this is going to be reflected later if we get to a judge's decision and it comes down to aggression. It's really interesting because there's so much of aggression from half of Warhard in the wedge robot, but the heavier half is having trouble maneuvering. A lot of control out of one half of Warhard. Not the half you would have expected, but they keep lining up those hits. Warhard on their head now. Actually, full maneuverability while upside down, it seemed like. Yeah, it uh, is amazing. Oh, wow! Are they back? Flipping upside down seems to have freed Whoa. something. Maybe they were stuck. Warhard attacking his own multibot there for a moment. Oh, 40 seconds left. Full maneuverability by Warhard is really turning this fight. Comet is slowing down dramatically. Some of its armor is now stuck under its own wheel. I don't think they can move like that. This could be something that, uh, oh, there it is. Popped back by its opponent. Warhard I don't think it's going to be enough. Just taking the opportunity, some more free hits. Great combo shot there with the, the wedge holding them still and coming in for the hits. Warhard has turned this fight on its head. Wow. Trying to take out our camera there in the corner. What a way to end the fight. Judge's decision. The winner is Warhard. Three pound weight class, semifinals. The greatest challenge has been extremely impressive. Very hard for anyone to keep it in the corners. Of course, Jelly Baby is going to try and get him stuck up against the wall. But greatest challenge has been getting away and staying up to speed for the entirety of the match. The, the size and the amount of energy in the spinner of greatest challenge, or I should say in the chassis of greatest challenge, makes it really hard for a control bot like Jelly Baby to stop it. 
And if it can't stop it, it cannot control it. 100% of the three pounds on Greatest Challenge is spinning. 100% of it is the weapon and also the armor. A great use of weight multi-purposing there. Um, Jelly Baby getting Ooh. the pin. Look at that. That is a uh, one in a hundred shot. Maybe not one in a million, but it is well <laughs> delivered and well uh, capitalized. And you got to you got to release it after you know under ten seconds and back at it again. We'll see if they can keep it up. Greatest challenge running into the wall there. Jelly Baby staying on him. Greatest challenge, ping pong and oh. off the walls. I think we'll see a little bit of lift here at the end of the, uh, the a little pop pin count. There it is. There it is, yeah. Now, it's interesting. Pippity, greatest challenge is a really um, difficult robot to flip up into the air. Because it's hollow in the center, you yeah. don't get a good angle on that flipper arm. Not a lot to grab onto. If Jelly Baby could get the right angle, they may be able to prop him up against the wall, but it's going to be tough. They've just got to maintain this aggression, keep getting these pins, and not take any damage. Greatest challenge there, actually bouncing off the wall and then hitting the back of Jelly Baby, almost a bank shot. I wonder if they're doing this on purpose. We've seen it before with Melty Brains. It's absolutely a valid strategy, and when you have a robot as durable as the Greatest Challenge, yeah. you can get away with it. The confidence in that chassis that they have to be able to hang around the arena like this. They just keep going. A but great pin. pin from Jelly Baby. So far, this fight is going better for Jelly Baby than any of Greatest Challenge's other opponents, and they are stuck on a divot in the floor. We are going to go for an unstick as the... Uh, no, we may not get to an unstick as the arena comes. We are, yes. So this will be going to the judges, but just barely. It looks like one half of the drive on Greatest Challenge is down. I'm only seeing no. one wheel. Oh, they are they are both spinning. Oh, there we go. Um, there is just a lot of debris, and we will be going to the judges yeah. uh, with a quick wow. intermission for the robots to demonstrate wow. their functionality. I have Paige here with me. What a dream day for you. You did a fantastic job in that fight as we wait for the JD. You told me that you have something amazing you need to share. What is going on? Um, well, I was in a rush to hook up my transceiver, or I'm sorry, my receiver, and I accidentally had channel one and channel two mixed up, so this was the acceleration when I pulled back, and this was backwards acceleration, and this was turn left, this was turn right. So I had to drive with messed up controls that entire fight. Is that something you've ever had to do before, or you just adjusted on the fly? Yeah, it was so rough, but they were amazing. The Greatest Danger is one of my favorite robots. They inspired me to start like, they're one of the bots that inspired my uh, my journey here, and it was a real honor to fight them. Well, Paige, you might uh, need to get go get ready for the next fight. I don't know. We'll wait for the judges, but way to go, and uh, we'll be rooting you on. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations to Paige. Despite how this judge's decision goes, to win a control match with a bot that you could barely control is, like, insane. But right now, this just in. Your winner by a huge margin, Paige Clayfield and Jelly Baby. Right. Warhard has been not only delivering huge hits uh, with the larger part of its multi-bot, uh, but this uh, this wedge bot mini, you know, accompaniment that it has has been so effective and so well driven. Five, they pulled in Peter four, Garnash. Three, uh, he's a fantastic two, uh, driver one, for an accompaniment five, bot, five, and that has been their ace five. in the hole so yep. far. You can see it coming out and setting it up for the one-two punch. Right off the bat, Chubby Unicorn on their heels, getting the worst of these engagements. It's interesting to see Chubby Unicorn with the forks losing the ground game on every hit against Warhead and their little wedgelets. Yeah, those forks have been uh, buckled in, and they are doing almost yeah, nothing. Now one. they're gone. That's actually an improvement. It's yeah. easier for them to work with a fork that is missing than a fork that is bent. Yeah. Oh, Warhart hit that fork and sent themselves flying in the process. Yeah, that was an interesting bit of physics. Yeah. Uh, Warhart knocking robots. their own wedge out of the way to get a shot there on Chubby Unicorn. Yeah, they're just hungry for it, Adam. They're just hungry. 
Uh, ooh, that is a bad spot for Chubby Unicorn. Not their where, weapon is off. They are stuck. Not where they want to be propped up there on their chassis. They're going to have to request an unstick, and I think Warhard will be happy to give it to them. Yeah, as soon as they request that unstick, you can see Warhard delivering a hit of their own. Warhard waiting for them to use the request. That means they have no more requests left. Chubby Unicorn, if they get stuck again, will get counted out. Chubby Unicorn's weapon appears to be down at this point, so they, they can drive just fine, but they are at a severe disadvantage. Yeah, Chubby Unicorn really on their back feet here, but we've seen so many times today, crazy comebacks. Anything can happen as long as your robot is still moving, but they appear to be stuck again, and I think that's going to do it. Yeah, such a shame. That drive is working flawlessly, but it doesn't matter if your wheels aren't touching the ground. Unfortunate end for Chubby Unicorn's day here as they get counted out. But Warhard is going to make the finals, making this their best competition ever. Warhard versus Jelly Baby is going to be a heck of a matchup. Really hard to predict what's going to happen. Three-pound weight class. Final. We've got Jelly Baby with Paige Clayfield from Aberdeen, Maryland. She's got a lifter and a 12 and run record with two knockouts. Jonathan Juarez from Houston, Texas. He's got a vertical spinner, 31 and 18 record with, that's right, 20 career knockouts. Absolutely amazing robot on the rise in this competition. Will he bring home his first golden dumpster today? I think we're in for a great fight. I have been looking forward to this one. Robots Away we go. Jelly Baby immediately getting caught up by uh, the smaller half of Warhard. That is a trap they need to be very careful of. And a couple pops there from, War from Warhard as Jelly oh! Baby ooh, drives them straight into this the is, wall. This is a really entertaining development. Jelly Baby is able oh! to go. Now that's a big hit on Jelly Baby. That may be the most effective we hit we've seen all day on Jelly Baby. Jelly Baby seems to be a little bit on their heels here, unable to deal with the two robots they're fighting against. That is a backwards pin if I've ever Ooh. seen one. Very effective. They are holding that. It is certainly a bit of luck involved, but <laughs> they are going to take pin. it. A pin is a pin. Uh, we'll get free here any moment. Oh, is oh, the drive no. down on Jelly Baby? The Jelly Baby flop. Well, so this is entertaining. Technically speaking, it can make its way across the arena using its weapon. That does count as movement. It will not be counted out as long as it can continue to do that. Uh, but it is darn near impossible to win a match oh, in but a it, condition it came like back that. to life there for a second. I saw it driving. We saw some issues earlier at the end of a fight where Jelly, Belly, or Jelly Baby stopped moving. Yeah, this is a very good point. Maybe there's a wire loose. Maybe the switch is uh, intermittent. It's hard yep. to say. Seems to be a little intermittent. I saw full control. I saw half control. And now we're back to no control. But Warhard is having uh, their way right now. Y you say that, but it is very hard uh, for Warhard to get a bite. It has a still. There, there it is. is. a wheel. That wheel is gone, and that does not look like movement right now. No, they are pinned against the wall. They are not counted out by any means. No, uh, uh, but they, you can't get counted out if your opponent keeps hitting you, and Warhard is not giving them the time to be counted out. This is a relentless assault from Warhard. <laughs> they're taking every advantage they're given. Jelly Baby just trying to make it to the bell here. I'm not dead yet, they say, as they keep the flipper going. They're strong, come back, and I'll bite your kneecap oh. vibes. Warhard sending their own mini flying. Such sure, aggression. Sure, why not? Let me through, I need to hit. Remember, Ooh. both these robots have their own stick left as well. Oh. oh. <laughs> Warhard almost needed to use it. Yeah. <laughs> this is wonderful. This brings such come joy to me. my heart. Come at me. This fight isn't over. I didn't hear no bell. It seems like we're going to make it to the end We here. are. What spirit <laughs> in Jelly Baby today? This will be going to a judge decision. Not a very difficult one, I don't think. No, but that robot took no quarter. It has wow. fought tooth and nail to a judge's decision in the finals. 
The crowd, this is an incredible match. The crowd saluting both teams here, putting on a heck of a final. All right, All right. and it is official by a huge margin. Oh my goodness. Jonathan Juarez and Warhol. No question about it, this dumpster's going to Texas. So, uh, Jonathan, we're going to see you in the World Championships. Will we see you before then? I plan on coming to the next one with just a 30, and hopefully that thing works. Well, uh, jet lag aside, you came here, you went on a tear. Congratulations, our three-pound champion today. You've definitely earned the dumpster. We, uh, we'll, we'll give that to you in just a second, but congratulations. And, Peter, incredible minibot driving today. Thank you so much. One thing left for me to do, Jonathan Juarez, we're hard. Congratulations! Twelve pound weight class quarterfinals. It's multibot versus multibot here with Avalanche having a wedge partner that's gonna try and take on Honey Pied's can lifter. The first shot's going to Avalanche here as they're able to get some chassis hits on Honey Pied. Not what Honey Pied is looking for. They're able to bring their weapon to blow um, as Avalanche now stuck against the wall. Interesting that the larger segments of each robot are having a lot of trouble staying close to one another. Yeah, they both seem to be kind of oversteering. Um, difficult for them to, to get the hits they're looking for, although Honey Five getting a few here. Yeah, both of, oh, that Honey Five horizontal yeah. spinner seems locked the weapon up. Weapon is down. Now on these uh, big horizontal bar spinners overhung like that, you know, it's, they can sometimes flex a little bit and, and something gets knocked out of place and they go down. Perhaps what happened here, although the belt still looks attached. The belt still looks attached and the weapon is still moving a bit, so it's not locked up, locked up. That's interesting. It may come back later in the fight. We'll just have to wait and see. That said, the cam lifter segment oh, of the Honeypot team. I think team. I saw the spinner moving a little bit. It oh, is, it's it back is. alive! And that's the hit they're looking for as uh, the cam lifter tees him up and the spinner comes in and knocks him down. Yeah, this strategy. <laughs> Set the Honey by throwing get it out of the way. Bot. I need to get in here. Gangway, little one. Okay, now Honey Fight trying to find an angle that's not going to result in them going weapon to weapon on Avalanche. There they go, right around the back. They got to watch out. I don't know how many of these hits their uh, their cam lifter can take, but uh, they're dishing them out to the main bot now as well. And that's. That cam lifter is using similar servos to what we see 30 pound robots just, you know, flipped around with on lever arms. That is a ton of power. It should be able to stand up to a lot. Yeah. And you can that see that is another a great nice move. tee up here. Can as Honey Fight is trying to find an angle and seems to be maybe backing off. I don't really understand that strategy. I mean, and they are clearly far and away ahead right now. Maybe they're just showing off. You know, I, it's never going to look good to the judges to be safe, but uh, maybe they don't need to go to the judges now if Avalanche can't move. No, we can oh, see a moving wheel. enough. Yeah, it's certainly moving enough not to get counted out. Yeah. And now you have drive issues on the Honey Fied Cam Lifter. Yeah. You know, you don't want to count your uh, robots before they hatch here. But Honey Fied is still going strong, getting hits in. Avalanche stuck against the wall. You know, not how Avalanche wants to end the fight without any movement there after a big hit from Honey Fied, but you know, I think Honey Fied thinks they did enough there. Right now we have some news. Judge's Ooh. decision in from that last what do fight. We got? Find out with us here on the screen. It's gonna be... Honey Fied by a huge margin. Absolutely punishing matchup for them. Really well driven by both teams. Not surprised with that judge's outcome, though. No. Really uh, interesting really strategy. Well They're going with very few forks on full court. Uh, I think that is uh, a strategy to defeat the horizontal spinner on the front of Caldera. Oh, you can see Clyde having trouble igniting, but there it goes. Now Clyde is going to barbecue. Uh, Clyde working on the smaller yeah. half of full court first. Of the course, Drunderchild half. Just as much damage at the judges for taking that out. However, you won't get the knockout unless you take out the larger part of full court. Oh! 
some interesting wobbles oh, on no. full court as it drives. Clyde might have just gotten taken out by the larger part of Caldera 12. I think it's it did. in this match. That fire is not supposed to go out until it is completely out of gas. Took a big hit from Caldera 12 accidentally, and that could count cost Caldera if this does make it to judges. Yeah, that weapon on Caldera is gonna have a really hard time with full court. The center of that robot is so flexible yep. and can absorb so much punishment, they need to get around to the sides or it is not gonna go their yeah, way. Yeah, you can see, oh, you can see them almost get around back there, but unable to swing it around. Full court is so well driven, just very difficult to get around them. I wonder if they should go after the smaller section of full court to even the score. It's definitely an option, but it's and not. And there they go. Yeah, they, they hurt you, I suppose. Uh, yeah, that will count for points. That will be a big deal. Plus, we can see for sure there's some left side drive damage yeah. on full court right now. It's going to give them control. It's going to give them aggression by going after that smaller one, which is now running away, which isn't going to look good for full court and the judges. So great strategy here, I would think, uh, going after that smaller robot. We'll see if it pays off, and they get a big hit on the back side of full court. Exactly what they were going for. So much aluminum tape is being ripped from that <laughs> robot and strewn about our arena. We're going to be cleaning it up for days. It sticks to everything, Adam. And that, you know, that does count as cosmetic damage. It's a little bit functional, I guess. And that smaller half of Caldera, or a full court, rather, very tricky to knock out as it keeps going, although half of it does seem to be down now. Yeah, it is suffering drive issues, but it is a durable little robot. That's what Nate Franklin has. Uh, oh. Capitalized full on full court, uh, looking a little bit less maneuverable than it had been. Now, Caldera 12 has gotten multiple direct hits on the back of full court's chassis, which is exactly what they're going for. Yeah, but let's let's be honest, no part of full court is a pushover. You no. hit anywhere, and it is still well armed. But they've taken out, it seems like they've taken out the smaller half here. Yep, we're going to be going to the judges. Ooh. This is a close match. There is a lot to weigh here. Damage, control, aggression, each one of those categories has a strong argument for either robot. I am here with Glenn and I'm here with Brian. I know we're waiting on the judges' decision. This was a very close match, but how, how did that fight go for you? What was your plan going against a robot like Full Court? I just needed to get a rounding, try to go for his forks on the one side, damage those, and then just run around and make him spin and sneak in and try to hit him. You know, I wasn't worried about trying to hit him. If I hit him in the front, I would go over and come in behind him. So that's what kind of stuff I was trying to do. Well, I think it worked as well as it could have. We're going to wait for the judge's decision and see what happens. Well, if the judges don't give it to me, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have to say this. I love Glenn Boxel in every way, shape, or form. He is so great, but here is your decision. Your winner, Caldera 12 and Glenn Boxel, not by a very large margin at all. That was so close. By enough, though, to keep us all safe from Glenn getting upset. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. Someone's weapon is very low and is slicing across the ground. Yeah, I think I it's believe, Garmin. No, I believe that's weather report. You can Oh, you might be oh! Whoa! That one-two combo was incredible. A mistake by Carmen backing directly into the weather report spinning disc. Carmen now limping badly. Only one side of drive working very limiting on their maneuverability. Oh, no. and then showing its back to its opponent. It is, it must just be hanging on. And oh. then what a twist of fate. Weather Report jams itself on the arena wall. Carmen unable to capitalize on that opportunity. But Carmen with the big hits we've been seeing all day. Weather Report stuck on their back. It is, Are those feet not touching the ground? They aren't. It is doing the thing. It is going to need to call in. Look, it is. it is carved a channel in our arena floor, and that's why it couldn't wow. self-right. And now it has... Uh, 
used its unstick. We get one per fight here. If they get stuck again, this is Carmen's fight with a minute and a half remaining. Yeah, but pieces of Carmen are being flung across the arena. The weapon is still up to speed, and is that all they need as they spin in place and try to keep the front pointed towards Weather Report? Wow! Oh! Look at this! Weather Report is stuck! It is almost impossible for them to free themselves from this but situation, the feet, but they are trying! The feet are gonna give them some vibration. You know, they're gonna be, can they get off the trying to hit the arena? They're wiggling, they're wobbling, but the fork seems to be stuck in the ground. They're not gonna get off. Carmen taking home the win! What a comeback from Carmen on one side of drive. Wow. Hey guys, I'm here sitting next to Michael Shore, who is working very hard on Carmen, who just eked out that win against Weather Report. Weather Report up on that side rail, if you remember. Michael, this looks like a brand new chassis, right? You would be correct. It is a brand spanking new chassis. And you you probably can't see the flurry of action that's happening on the uh, on the table right behind you. There is another uh, group of your teammates who are frantically taking apart the last Carmen, because I'd imagine there's parts in that that have to go on this chassis right now. You are very correct. So pretty much the frame and a lot of the armor got demolished. Uh, I goofed up the driving real early in the fight, gave him a really good shot. At, um, so a lot of the frame is not not looking good. How, how long is it gonna take to get basically all the parts off of that onto this? Well, if they can get like the weapon and the electronics, we swap them in here, I don't think it'll take too long. Um, all of that looks fine and it looks like they're about done over there. Um, so I'm hoping if I can get this together, they get that done. Um, it should be hopefully a pretty, I wouldn't say smooth swap, but we'll get it done. All right, well, it looks like you got the whole team hustling here. Good luck. There's not much time left in the night. Oh, thank you. That is where the stress comes in in this sport. A picosecond mistake in that fight has led to now 20 minutes of pure stress in the pits for this team. Everybody frantically working to take all of the parts out of that chassis and put it into a chassis that has some semblance of straightness to it. Let's go to Chris up in the pits with some major breaking news. Chris, what do you got for us? It is breaking. It is heartbreaking, actually. Uh, I am standing in front of the table of Carmen. Michael Shore, we just talked to him, and uh, we saw some of the team frantically working on getting that box packed together. Michael just told both the gearboxes on Carmen had completely exploded as they were starting to migrate some of those other parts onto that new chassis. It doesn't look like they're gonna get it back together. Uh, actually, I just, uh, I, see, I see Michael coming in now. Michael, come on in. So it looks like Carmen is gonna be forfeiting. It was an incredible day. It was you know, a nail biter there right at the end. Tell us uh, what's going through your head right now. Well, I confirmed with the front desk before I forfeited that I am qualified for December, um, which I was honestly not expecting. Um, the competition here gets so much worse, not worse, but harder every time. Uh, it was a brand new robot. It was my first time competing here this year, so I've been off for a few months. Um, so I was just here to see what was going to happen, and it, there hit, it, it, was, it hit the point in the day where you just start grinding and getting ready for fights, and sometimes you start winning. So a little bit of luck, but, I mean, it was a good day. It was very stressful. But. Obviously, the, the absence of Carmen now totally changes potential outcomes in the 12-pound bracket. I know how hard you and your team were working on getting everything back together, but that really kind of spells out what the war of attrition is here at NHRL. Yeah, it's absolutely not. It's, it's not a, a game of design the best robot. It's a game of, you know, design the best robot that will just work every time. It's just so much harder than it sounds. Um, but it's just ongoing and ongoing. You find things that like how you work and then how your brain works, and then uh, it's just it's just a lot of a lot of learning. Michael, congratulations on qualifying for the World Championship. So we are definitely going to see you again here this year. And great run today, man. Twelve pound weight class semifinal. I gotta say, it's gonna be hard to tell these uh, cam lifters a butt. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, he's. They're both going after the same robot. That uh, paused. Paused? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pa Oh, you know what? I think someone might have jumped the gun, maybe? Interesting. 
It did look like someone went early. I don't know if maybe some other reason caused the pause. Possibly. You can see our referee, Gwen, uh, she is getting involved here. So looks, yeah, I, I think yeah. you are correct. Now, that's not an immediate disqualification. No, it does happen sometimes. You are uh, itchy on your trigger finger. Away we go. Let's try part two. Okay, maybe they can remember who's on whose team this time. We'll see. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the little stickers on the mini box? I can't tell. Interesting. So, the uh, cam lifter going up against Bumble oh, Blitz. Oh, boy. Where is the other cam lifter? Just leaving him be. And, and Bumble Blitz is getting torn apart by Honeyfied. Yeah, this is not where Bumble Blitz wants to be. Seeing a lot of twists on that hammer saw. Oh, a lot of noises that don't sound good, and the hammer saw has stopped. Not well. It is the whole robot is yes. stopped. Yeah, it is a lot more serious than just the hammer saw. Uh, the the robot is still twitching, but there is something deeply askew yeah, one in the, the framework. Ooh. Yeah, the wedge is torn up there, we and now out. we're gonna get a tap out. Wow. Honeyfied will be facing Caldera 12. Honeyfied in its first competition ever. Right. Making Cruising the finals. Losing its way to the finals. Okay, from the Honeyfied team, we've got Dominic Mussolino, Lexington Park, Maryland. He's brought his horizontal spinner with a 5 and 0 record, rocking two KOs. Caldera brought to us by Glenn Boxel from Marlboro, Massachusetts. He's got a horizontal spinner with an 11 and 4 record and a mean 8 KOs. These two robots are mechanically, at least the larger parts, are mechanically very similar. It's all going to come down to the details and that extra multi -bash. They've been fighting so well as a team all day. Will they be able to cap off a perfect day and a perfect record for Honeyfied? Caldera 12 is going to try and stop them. Some glancing blows. This is where uh, skill really takes Ooh. over in a cam lifter robot. Honey well, fights, should, that cam lifter works. Honey fights cam lifter seems to have lost a side of drive very quickly in this fight. Yes, now I'm not hearing a lot of spinning in there. And that sounds the yes. quiet spinning sound of Honey Fight as Caldera 12 has stopped. Yep, this is absolutely Honey Fight's uh, fight to win or lose now. It all lies in their hands. Can they maintain durability for the rest of this fight? Keep spinning. It's an interesting, uh, you know, task as a driver here. You want to show aggression. You want to be aggressive. You want to damage the opponent, but you don't want to break yourself. Yeah, it only takes one bad hit on your opponent to break yourself and put you right in their shoes. If Honey Fight goes too hard and is and breaks their own weapon here, they're going to go into a judge's decision uh, on the back foot as opposed to going in oh, ahead. Oh, those two were wow. linked together for a moment. That's an incredibly <laughs> dangerous place to be. Sharp edge of Caldera 12 right up against the belt of Honey Fight. They could have accidentally sheared their belt against that tooth if they weren't careful, but yeah. able to get out. Adam, look, huh? yes! Little one-two punch with the slightly disabled cam lifter on Honeyfy. Caldera Still coming in clutch. Caldera having serious drive issues yep. now on its right side. You can see a little slash there. I think uh, the weapon of Honeyfy got through the the armor and hit that wheel. And Honeyfy is not letting up. They're not afraid to hit them, break themselves. They're going full bore with a minute left in this final. Cut air 12, just, just hoping something breaks on Honeyfied here. That is really their only chance, and it would need to be something big to compensate for all of these big hits. I think even if the Honeyfied's Look weapon went down. I love a <laughs> mostly disabled robot, like, <laughs> sliding back into the match. The cam lifters still work. They still lift and they still release as Honeyfied comes there in There it is the again! Hit. And this is, of course, saving the larger robot, saving Honeyfied's spinner, uh, uh, these impacts still showing control, buying them time. There's the release. 20 seconds left in this fight, and I think Honeyfied is, is starting to feel it. Really wonderful work from Team Honeyfied, or Team Honeycracked, I should say. With 10 seconds left, we are going to make it to a judge's decision here. 
but I don't think Caldera as well has done enough. They've just been beaten up. They're gonna be happy to make the bell. Honeycraft is very happy. Justifiably thrilled. That is as close to a sure thing as you're gonna get when both robots are still operating at the end of your match. Uh, we are gonna go to a judge's decision in just a minute, but again, I think it's a foregone conclusion. We have an announcement. So to avoid a judge's decision, Glenn Boxel tapped out after the bell rang. That means officially your winner, Dominic Mussolino, Honeyfire! <laughs> This is a bot that kind of came out of nowhere. It's, a, it's new. You tore through the competition today. This thing is a heavy hitter. Yeah. Uh, it is kind of designed similar to the three pound hive smashing that I used to compete with last year and a couple years before that as well. So kind of scaling it up a little bit and aimed a little bit more for, well, just kind of doing like so not only taking a dumpster here tonight, but also qualified for the World Championships on the bot's first day out. Uh, tell me, what are you going to be doing to prepare yourself for the World Championships? Uh, making sure everything works properly, um, having a bunch of spares, because that might come in handy, and just fine-tuning everything. Yeah, a lot more spares. Absolutely great performance on, from Honeyfied. Great driving today. Honeycracked, an incredible team. What a spirited team. I love you guys. Back to you guys at the desk. Wow. Bringing home the gold for Team Honeycrack, Dominic Mussolino. Absolutely amazing performance today with Honeyfied. That is what you like to see. Yeah, Absolutely no. incredible 12 pound final. That was amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Oh, yeah? Let's do it. Let's give out our last golden dumpster of the it. day, shall we? Yeah, yeah. One thing left for me to do. Congratulations on your 12-pound dumpster. You guys have earned it! All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a phenomenal June edition of NHRL National Havoc Robot League. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for joining us in this chaos. We will see you next time. Have a beautiful night.